Hey guys, so we're going to take the code that we wrote yesterday and we're going to add types to it. So we added a mutation to our component. This is our register controller that I have up right here. And we kind of just put in any for pretty much all of the GraphQL types. So what we're going to do today is actually generate what these types should be and put them in. So there's a nifty tool called Apollo Code Gen that we're going to be using that actually makes it super easy that we don't have to manually write out all of the queries and the mutations and the variables they should have, all that stuff. So what you're going to do is install Apollo Code Gen like so. I already have that, so we're just going to move to the next step. And we're going to introspect our schema. So I'm going to copy this. And what it means to introspect your schema, and I want to do this uh, CD into packages, and I'm going to CD into controller. All right, so what this is going to do is it's going to look at our server. And so you want to make sure the server is up and running. And it's going to look at basically the schema of it. And uh, it's going to take it and put it in a JSON file. So here, all we need to do is tell it where our uh, server is up and running at. So I'm going to say localhost 4000. And then we're going to output a JSON file, which is just schema.json. And uh, in our controller now, we can actually just look over here and we can see this new file generated. And you'll notice it's basically the schema, except now it's in JSON form and it has a whole bunch of other kind of stuff to annotate it and whatnot. Um, and so that's what we're going to use. And we're going to be using the generate tool next. So from that schema, we have to tell it um, our GraphQL types, if you will. Uh, or not the types, but the queries we're making. So for example, we're making only one query or only one mutation here. And so we have to tell Apollo, hey, here's the one mutation that we are, are doing. And it will create the type definitions for this one. Um, and I'm just going to run Apollo code gen like this because I want to show you guys um, kind of the help options because I think it's what maybe maybe it's dot h. Um, or maybe I just run it like so. Dosh dash help maybe. There we go. So what I wanted to show you guys, and let's do the generate. Let's bring this up to the top, and let's do this on generate. Is there's a lot of different options. <laughs> so, a one of the one of the most important options is this target right here. So this is something they don't really talk about in the README. Um, but these are all the different types that you can create. So for us, we're doing TypeScript. You can either do the base TypeScript, which is a little bit older, or we're going to use the uh, modern TypeScript, which we're going to say TS Modern for, or we could write it out. But notice there's also like Scala. Uh, I don't know why you'd use JSON or whatnot, but there's some other ones right, that you can use if you're using Swift or whatnot. So we're going to copy this command. And then for the target, we can change that. And we don't need to do the output. The output's only needed if you're using like uh, an older version of it. But with TS, if you do TS modern, it's going to go ahead and uh, grab that automatically. All right, so we tell it what, uh, what types we want to get created. We're doing TypeScript because that's what our project uses. And then over here, there's this schema.json. So we're telling it where our schema is. So it's right here. We could just say dot slash schema as well. Here, we are specifying where our queries are. So here, it's telling you to look at all the directories and look for a dot GraphQL file. Now, we're not using GraphQL files, right? It's ours are right here. Um, so instead, we're going to say star dot TSX. So what this is going to do is it's going to look through all the TypeScript files, which is really just this file right here. Um, and we can also tell it to look in source because we know that's where all our stuff is. Um, so it's going to look in the source directory. It's going to look through all the files and see if there's any queries or mutations. Now, right now, if I run this, we should get an error. And the, the reason for that is I did not give uh, this a name. You'll get this uh, does not support anonymous options. So to give this a name, uh, just uh, after the mutation here, between the parentheses, you're going to give it a name. 
the name I usually like to call it, and whatever name you use, this will be name, the name of the TypeScript type. I like to just do an uppercase version of uh, what this is. So I'll call it register mutation. And so that's why I used, I told you in the last video, I used a lowercase r for this. For the type, I'll then use an uppercase r. Um, and so now if we regenerate this, hopefully it now works. Cool, so no errors for me. You'll notice there's a new folder, and this is underneath a register controller called generated. And there's now this thing called register mutation. So this is our uh, type annotations and what it created for us. So we can see here's our register mutation, and uh, it expects, I don't know, a path and a message back, or it might be null, right? Here's our variables, so we expect an email and password for the variables. So now we can use these things. So how child mutate props works is at first you specify the props your component takes. So these are our uh, props the component takes. And then here we specify uh, the mutation, you know, what we expect to get returned from the mutation, which is just going to be register mutation. And then lastly, we specify the variables we expect. So that's going to be register mutation variables. And you'll notice, again, we're just getting this from the generated code. And now, if we hover over mutate, uh, we can see some type annotations for what we expect uh, to get. And like, for example, the response, um, we should know that response dot uh, data, for example, and we can get register and all that jazz. And it does this annoying thing sometimes where it uh, thinks it's a template. But yeah, so now we have the type definitions for it. And so what I want to do also is we know this is going to be, uh, the variables are going to be what we get from the form. So I'm actually going to use this in a couple different places. So here and then also here. So now that is what our expected uh, thing is. And uh, I think we're good to go now for this. Uh, the, the other thing you can do is you can pass in uh, the types down here. So you can pass in in the same order. So props, um, uh, what's the, register mutation, and then register mutation variables. The reason why you might want to do this is sometimes um, you might need to uh, do some other things in your, uh, what's it called down here? There's options, so you might have to do options, and you might need to uh, take the props as a parameter or whatever. So now you have type definitions when you uh, you do that. But we don't have to worry about that right now. This is an optional thing you might get to if you do more Apollo stuff. All right, so this is how you would type, for example, this, uh, this component. So we have the auto-generated types. Now I think we need to build this and we can make sure it still works. Uh, and actually before we build this, I want to add to our package.json. Uh, we're constantly gonna be running those commands. So I'm gonna call this gen types. And we're gonna be running these two things right here. So introspect and again at localhost 4000, that's where our server's running at. We're gonna output um, actually, I guess we'll call this, let's call this introspect. And then we'll call this, I guess this is generate. And we'll copy, I guess we should copy what we did in the command line. So let's go up. So we're going to copy this thing right here. And then I'm going to say gen types. For this, we're going to do npm run introspect, and we're going to do npm run generate. All right, so uh, you can do npm run like that, and what I'll do is I'll just run this command, and then I'll run this command. Uh, and now that we have Apollo Cogen, we want to run this from npm. Uh, I, what I want to do is just yarn add as a dev dependency Apollo Cogen. And now all we have to do is run yarn gen types and it'll go ahead and introspect and generate it because we're going to basically need to run this again because this is our only mutation, right? Anytime we add a controller, we're going to need to run that. Uh, and then we're going to build this. So whenever this is done, we'll build. I'm going to do yarn. Actually, before we build, why don't we just do gen types and make sure that whole flow works. 
Um, and yep, looks like something went wrong. Uh, maybe I didn't specify missing required argument output. Okay, so I didn't like that I didn't specify an output. It, it didn't mind it before though. Um, we'll put output and I don't I don't care we can just copy what they call it so operation result types dot ts and I'm gonna put this inside of source so source slash all right so this is kind of getting long so at the end I just added dash dash output and then uh, where I want it to output I'll see it make sure that works and uh, argument target given are the options I specify TS modern here I must be doing like a small typo or something I don't know what it is all right so what I'm going to do instead because I cannot get this to work uh, maybe I have a small typo or something here is I'm going to just create a script file so we'll call this um, gen types dot sh and I'm gonna say make this executable slash bin slash uh, shell or excuse me bash and then we'll just run these two commands Alright, so I just made a bash script and it's just going to run the two commands and we're just going to change mod it so it make it executable. So plus x gen types and we're going to say gen types. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you know why I, uh, I have this messed up here because I prefer to just run it from npm. Uh, looks like I have something else just messed up. Uh, the path argument must be of type string I guess because I didn't pass the type. Oh, there we go. I had output at the end, which I shouldn't have. All right, so it looks like gen types works fine now. And I'm going to do yarn build. So then from the other side, uh, I don't think we need to have the type any that we added. And I think that was in our connector. So, okay, I had to specify the type of what the submit was uh, because we said it was the type anything before. Now this has an explicit type to it, at least when it finished building, so we shouldn't need to specify here. So we know what this submit function does based on the type declaration that we specified um, right here. So we said submit is a function that returns a promise of null. And so that's what it should show here. Uh, perfect. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. We got the type definitions working, and this will be our workflow whenever we add something to controller. So after we finish adding uh, a new controller, we will gen types it, and that will generate the type definitions, and then we can pass them in like so. So this is the basic flow of what we're gonna do for pretty much the rest of the tutorial. So we'll build out um, the UI, then we'll add a controller, hook it up to the back end, and continue. Now before we do other pages like login, forgot password, and whatnot, uh, what I want to do is deploy this guy. So I don't know if I, I'm, I think I'm going to start with the back end and deploy that first, and then we'll deploy the front end as well. So I'll show you deploying with Yarn Workspaces is a little tricky as you'll see, uh, but that is what's coming up next.